Now that we're able to clearly explain and show in a model how energy storage molecules are made within an ecosystem through this process of photosynthesis that occurs in producers, we need to next consider what factors affect how many energy storage molecules producers are able to make. And we need to consider this because we know that our biodome experiment failed because our plants and our animals simply did not have enough energy storage molecules to perform the functions that they need to survive. So if we're going to consider why there weren't enough energy storage molecules in an ecosystem and why producers weren't able to produce enough of them, it makes sense to me to consider those inputs, those reactants of our chemical reaction of photosynthesis. And this makes sense to me to consider these reactants, these inputs into our photosynthesis process, because I know from a previous unit in chemical reactions that I don't make new stuff I don't get rid of stuff during a chemical reaction. I simply rearrange the stuff that's there. So if this energy storage molecule simply comes from an, a rearrangement of stuff and I don't have enough of these, then that means I didn't have enough stuff to rearrange to make it. So let's investigate these inputs, these reactants of our photosynthesis chemical reaction a little bit further. And we're gonna use the SIM to help us do that. So our mission in the SIM, in order to address this investigation question of what factors affect how many energy storage molecules producers are able to make, is to find at least two ways to decrease the amount of these molecules by experimenting around within the SIM. And I'm gonna give you one constraint as you do that. My constraint is gonna be without killing anything. So you can't use those kill buttons. We know that the um, animals and the plants in the biodome were safely removed uh, once the Equinauts noticed that they were having trouble growing and reproducing. So they didn't kill anything. Uh, so we're not gonna kill anything either in our sim. We're gonna keep that same constraint. So if you have access to the sim, you can go ahead and pause the video at this time investigate our question and complete our sim mission. What are two ways you could decrease the amount of energy storage molecules producers make without using the kill buttons? For those of you who don't have access to the sim or wanna check your work, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my sim at this time to do the same thing. Remember, if you are using Amplify Online, there's that stack menu where I can just quickly navigate to the sim and open it up. And I'm not gonna change any of the, the parts, the components of my SIM model at this time. I'm just gonna go ahead and press play. And I'm gonna wait a little bit here. Um, let's make our SIM be a little bit faster because I'm kind of impatient. Um, I'm just gonna wait a little bit here to let the SIM kind of run its course because remember the biodome experiment didn't immediately fail, it took uh, a couple of years before the Equinauts noticed that there didn't seem to be enough energy storage molecules. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that run to mimic the couple of years where the biodome ecosystem seemed to work before failing. And while it does that, I'm gonna remind myself of the mission, find at least two different ways to decrease the amount of energy storage molecules producers can make without using the kill buttons. Okay, so if I am going to try to alter the outputs of a producer, then I'm gonna mess around with some of the inputs, okay? I know that one of my inputs is sunlight, and I know that another one of my inputs is trap. And from this current view on the sim, it's gonna really be difficult to tell um, if there is a change in my energy storage molecules. So I'm gonna change my view of the sim. If you haven't noticed down beneath here, there's this little graph looking button. 
So I'm gonna press that. And when I do that, I can see some actual data for the amounts of things that are going on here in the sim. I can see total carbon atoms, uh, carbon atoms in both the biotic and abiotic section. Um, I'm gonna make sure these things are turned on. They are perfect. So let's show energy. There it is. That's what I was looking for energy storage molecules. And I'm just going to leave those ones highlighted because I don't want to um, confuse myself with too much information. I just want to streamline what I'm looking for. And that is here, these energy storage molecules. All right. So let's go back now. Oops. Go back now to the main sim. And again, if I want to change my output, I'm going to mess around with one of my inputs. And I'm gonna use sunlight to start with. Today in Denver, it's a really nice, beautiful, sunny day, but we're gonna get some snow soon, so it's gonna get cloudy. So let me go ahead and, and show that. Okay, so I went and I just turned the sun off. It's not realistic, but we're using a model. Okay, so let's pause and let's see what happened. Oh, nothing yet. So let me let that run its course a little bit longer. And again, I'm kind of impatient, so I'm gonna speed up my time. And I can go ahead and already start to notice some things happening with the output of these energy storage molecules right now within uh, this current view of the sim. Let's go ahead and pause. And then here's my graph. Okay, what do you notice happened? What does that mean? about our mission. Let's restart. I'm gonna hit reset. Yep. So I think I found one way to decrease the amount of energy storage molecules, and that was by just kind of reducing or turning off altogether the amount of sunlight. But my mission said to find two ways. And again, I can't kill anything. If I want to change, again, the output, I think it makes sense to alter an input. So I already altered sunlight. My other input that I'm able to change here is the carbon dioxide, okay? And I have this button here called trap that I played with before. I'm gonna press that. And when I press that button, my carbon dioxide, it doesn't disappear because remember, we can't just make matter disappear. It's just moving somewhere else. So I'm just gonna keep on pressing the trap button because I just, again, I'm impatient and really wanna see what happens here. So I'm just gonna get a lot up there. Okay. That's probably good. Let's pause. Okay, check out the graph. Oh, let me turn on my energy storage molecules. That'd be helpful. Okay. So remember up here, I don't know if I pointed it out last time, but I can see the key that's indicating user changes. User is me. Um, and this little uh, triangle over here is trap. So those are all of the times that I was pressing that trap button. So first time, press it once and then I started to kind of rapidly press it. Take a moment, observe, what do you notice? And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit more time because I think I saw the pattern, but the pattern didn't last a whole lot of time on my graph. So I'm gonna just continue this a little bit to make sure that pattern that I think I saw the first time holds true here after a longer period of time. Okay, so let's pause again and let's see what happened. So there's my first part and there's again my, whoops, my continued rapid fire of pressing the trap button. What did you notice happening? Awesome, I noticed it too. My energy storage molecules were decreasing. So when I check my mission, it seems like I figured out two ways to decrease the amount of energy storage molecules without using the kill button. 
I was able to one, change the amount of sunlight by reducing it. And number two, I was able to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide. Nice work.